So these other potential uses of the system beyond space tourism were crucial to us from the start. We've only just begun to develop the business plan for them, but they were always crucial to us. Scientific research, space training, technology test and demonstration, so space qualification of instruments. And that's one of the interesting things about Spaceship Two. When Spaceship Two is in space, there is not a single moving part moving. And therefore, not only can our space tourist customers, to go back to a point I made earlier, they can hear the silence of space. It'll be only be them making a noise that they can hear. Now, if you go on the shuttle, or if you go into the ISS, it's not possible to hear that silence of space. I suppose the nearest an astronaut might get to it is sometimes in their spacesuit on a spacewalk. But even there, you've got noise and movement of equipment inside the, the uh, spacesuit. But in this particular case, we will have no moving parts. There will be complete silence unless they break it themselves. And they will be able to hear the silence of space. And that was really all of the interest in that from the customers was based around comments Brian Binney made in the film they all watched before they bought, where he talked about the fact that he heard the first ping of the molecules as Spaceship One re-entered the atmosphere. He thought there was something wrong with the spaceship at first. And the customer said, we want to hear that. I want to come back and say I've heard a molecule hit the side of the spaceship. So we've given them that capability in Spaceship Two as well. But that also helps for things like space qualification. Spaceship Two will also have a, a release mechanism within it to allow us to release payload out of it to come back down into the atmosphere for atmospheric testing in the upper atmosphere and for other work. And we'll also have an area in the vacuum where you're going to be able to qualify equipment as well. And here is the very big beast. The reason that I put it's very big, Bert, is those are exactly the first words that Richard Branson said to Bert Rutan when he saw it, first of all. He just said, it's very big, Bert. And um, in fact, this is Bert and Richard standing way down in the corner of it, which does give the idea of quite how big it is. And of course, the test flights are underway. And I think at this moment, I'll just give you an update on where we are this year. We've uh, completed test flight five. We are now fully pressurized in the cabin and we're going for altitude over the next couple of flights. And then the big, big test flight in terms of uh, the first long, long test flight will be June the 19th. Spaceport America are having a sort of groundbreaking ceremony. And the plan is subject to weather, obviously, because of the conditions of the experimental flying program, is that the first long flight of White Knight 2 is going to overfly that ceremony uh, on June the 19th of this year. And it'll be a non-stop flight from Mojave over the site north of Las Cruces and then back again to Mojave. Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single-engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency, flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect, including the Cirrus airframe parachute system. With its V-tail design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at CirrusDesign.com. In addition to that, we're also going to take White Knight 2 to Oshkosh, for any of you who don't already know that, who are interested and happen to go to Oshkosh. We'll be doing a couple of demonstration flights at Oshkosh as well. We'll be coming in on the Monday of Oshkosh Sunday, which I think is the 28th or 29th of July. And uh, we will be there for, the White Knight 2 will be there most of the week. And Sir Richard and Bert will be there doing some presentations as well. Excitingly as well, uh, I can confirm for the first time that we are going to fly the spaceship before the end of the year this year. So the idea is that White Knight 2 will finish its test flying program, stage one of its test flying program, i.e. without the spaceship attached. And when we are comfortable with all the data on that and scaled are comfortable with that data, we are going to attach the spaceship before year end, and we are going to fly the spaceship up to altitude, and we will be hoping to uh, give it a glide test back down to the Earth as well. Then the next stage is to attach the rocket motor and begin rocket motor testing of it the following year. And a little bit of an update on rocket motor. Rocket motor 2 has now successfully completed its first round of hot fires. Um, those have been conducted with our friends at Sierra Nevada Corporation uh, and Space Dev their subsidiary, which they acquired. We've been working with Scaled on Rocket Motor 2. And we've actually sent out a short customer video this very morning to our customers with a little uh, tiny three-minute film on the hot fires. So I'll hopefully be showing that at the end of the presentation today. Many people, and I'm sure nobody in this room would ask it, many people ask me when I do speeches, why would you bother with space tourism? What's the point of man going to space at all? Now, with an audience like this, I hope I don't have to answer that question, so I'm not going to go into too much detail. 
But obviously, you know, I would quote Professor Stephen Hawking explaining why man has to go into space. Or I would look at what we're doing in space generally with the GPS system and agricultural and weather satellites feeding this blooming planet at the moment and the pressures that we have on this planet and why we have to be in space. But the fact of the matter is, is that one of the important reasons for this project is that the regularity of flight, of flying the system two or three times a day, creates the economies of scale to allow you to then attack the markets such as 200 kilogram satellite launches much cheaper than you could do otherwise. You wouldn't build this system just to launch the satellites. You wouldn't build this system if you were just going to take a couple of hundred scientists into space a year with microgravity experiments because you wouldn't be able to justify it. So this is a holistic business plan. The one feeds the other. The space tourists are like those barnstormers in the 1920s, paying to go on those little planes in fields all over America, keeping those pilots going, keeping the investment going. There's a lot of similarities, actually, to my mind. I've, I'm, a, I'm a historian of, uh, sort of um, you know, history of how capitalism has grown and developed. And one of the interesting parallels between our current credit crunch, this project, and the past in aviation is the fact that the early plane manufacturers, people like Juan Tripp at Boeing, and Howard Hughes, they were in credit crunches, and they were dealing with new technologies in aviation for the future. And in order to get them used, they had to start their own airlines. Pan Am was started by Juan Tripp. TWA was started by Howard Hughes, because they needed to start their own airlines because there just wasn't the marketplace. There was no confidence around. So Virgin's had to be its own airline and its own manufacturer in this project, working with Scaled. And that has meant that we've had to look very closely at how we look at the entire business that we're developing. Welcome to the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource. Real-time, 24-7 online, audio, and video programming, where aviation has been getting updated for over a decade. Distributing over 11,000 stories, features, audio, and video programs every year. Only ANN covers aviation and aerospace with this much depth, insight, and expertise. Check us out on the web at aero-news.net. And the space tourism is a means to an end. Now, I don't mean that in a deprecating way to our space tourists. They are pioneers. But they are doing this partly because they want to do it. But also, they feel good about doing it because they know that this system has lots of other capabilities, applications, and has development potential through a White Knight 3 and a Spaceship 3 in the future. And they can be proud to be part of that by putting down the money they've made through their success in the arts, in industry, in biosciences, in whatever activity it may be as scientists or entrepreneurs, they know that they're actually making a down payment on the future of mankind in space with this project, and they're very proud of that. And for us, it is this multiple development. This is what everybody read in 2004 as Burke won the X Prize, space tours. That was going to be the Virgin Galactic business. Then as things have unfolded, we've started talking about the science services. Then, of course, the next business is cargo, taking payload up into space just as Jeff was talking about with developments that might come from his Lynx project. And of course, one day, there's the apple in the eye of Sir Richard Branson, which is the fact that he believes, and I believe, and I think many of us at Virgin believe, that long-distance travel around this planet within 20 to 30 years is going to have to be conducted outside the atmosphere. Now, Spaceship 2 and White Knight 2 aren't the beginning of that, because eventually, you probably won't use an air launch product to do something like that, and you certainly would need to use a different re-entry methodology for a very long flight on the edge of the atmosphere to the one that we've developed for the re-entry of Spaceship 2 and White Knight 2. They're just a the beginning. But conceptually, with the right engine developments, with the kind of things that we can see going on in other places, we eventually see Virgin Galactic as the beginning of a new type of world travel. So that's the apple in our eye for the long term and the future.